<clears throat> Hello everybody, uh, and welcome to a series that I'm probably just going to call So You Want to Speedrun Metroid Fusion. Um, I've released a few tutorials in the past for this game, um, most notably the 100% tutorial, which I think is still the only 100% tutorial there, um, as well as a slightly condensed any percent uh, no memory corruptions tutorial. The, the one thing about my any percent no memory corruptions tutorial that I just didn't, um, it just felt like there was something that was still missing. Because the goal of that, I didn't want it to be too long to where it was a, like, a six hour tutorial, uh, because then that's just, you know, it's hard to digest that. Um, but I feel like in doing so, I ended up leaving out a lot of things that I feel are, yeah, good information if you're just learning how to run the game. Uh, stuff like extra am ammunition or energy tanks or whatever the case may be, uh, different strategies to get through rooms. Um, so I really want to start doing so. Essentially, I just want to create a short, kind of, I, I guess, mini series, really, um, that will walk through area by area, sector by sector, and give as much information as I possibly can to. Whoever might be watching this, if you're looking to get into speedrunning Metroid Fusion, if you're a little bit more experienced, or whatever the case may be, probably not more experienced, but if you're looking to get started in speedrunning, I want this to be a decent enough tool that has enough information to allow you to, you know, get the building blocks to begin running the game, so that way you can feel confident enough that you're able to complete runs and then kind of work your way down uh, at, from that point. The reason I want to do it sector by sector is because each sector, well, usually what I've learned when I first joined the community seven years ago or so at this point, um, it was always, you know, instilled in me that like, practice by sector, get good at each sector, and then, you know, put it all together at a certain point uh, into, a, into a single run. And I, I want to be able to, you know, be able to give people the tools to be able to go, you know, practice each sector uh, and, and go in a pace enough where you can keep up, where I'm not moving too quickly, where there's too much information being thrown at you. And I feel like this is a really good uh, way to tackle this. Um, so I'll go over some of the basics, like the very basic things, uh, and then I think I'll cover uh, Bane Deck because it's pretty short, and Sector 1 in the first video, Sector 2 in the second, and then do a sector per video, and try to cover as much information and detailed information as I can. What I'm going to be using for this, I'm not going to be using an emulator because, uh, you know, I prefer not to. I, I never really use emulators. Uh, I'm going to be using uh, the Nintendo GameCube with a Game Boy player. Um, so, to start off with, let me, I guess if you're going to be running on emulator, because there's a lot of people uh, in the community, I would say most of the community runs on emulator, um, first and foremost, there are rules for submitting, uh, while using an emulator. We have, as a community, switched over very recently from in-game time to real-time, so your RTA or the time on a timer, such as the one that's being displayed here on the screen right below me, uh, that final time will be your time, and then the in-game time will just be you know, whatever it is. This is a secondary timing method. Um, so with that comes a little bit of changes. Before, when it was uh, in-game time, we would allow any emulator because the real time, sorry, that there was an in-game time, um, ran along with it, so if the game lagged, the in-game timer would lag. And we felt that that was the most accurate timing method uh, for the longest time, until we hit a point where, you know, only so many people can be tied with a, f a 45, a 46, a 47, a 48 at the very top of the leaderboard and have a, like, an eight-way split for second or third place that we felt that real-time is was better to go with. It was a community decision. The community we had been asking for it for a very long time. 
Um, but that's not the point of this video. Um, so I will be using a Nintendo GameCube um, with an action replay to allow me to quick save and reload quickly since I don't have the quick save function. Um, if you're going to be playing on emulator, we require BizHawk. Uh, the latest version of BizHawk, which I believe is 2.3 um, or above. Uh, and at the conclusion of your runs, uh, you're going, you will have to, sorry, not at the, not at the very conclusion, at the in-game time screen, uh, you will have to show a few things if running on emulator. Uh, you're going to have to show that you're running on BizHawk with an MGBA core and proper firmware. Uh, as well as the, uh, what is it called, the hash for the, gosh, um, it's the debugger, the master for confusion. Um, so MGBA core selected, BizHog version selected, proper firmware, uh, which I believe should just be tool assisted speedruns, is the what you should be using, as well as the, I think the M5 hash, or whatever it's called, uh, at the very end. And you can go onto the leaderboard and see, um, and look at an emulator run to see, you know, at the very end what all needs to be shown. As well as go into the Discord, and, you know, anybody there would be able to help assist you setting up emulator and everything else. By doing this, uh, we're able to allow BizHawk uh, emulated runs onto the leaderboard with real time because we feel and we've run tests uh, and we found that it runs uh, very accurately um, when in comparison to you know, the console. Um, but that's all, you know, submission stuff. Um, but I feel like it's important to cover this because a lot of this stuff is... It comes into question a lot. Um, the other thing that is going to be required is that... It doesn't. It no longer has to be single segment because it's of RTA. But you still need to start from a 00, zero start file. And I'm going to show you how to create that right now. Um, I'm going to be doing this tutorial on uh, the Japanese version of the game, as you can see. I will erase this file and I will let this play. So uh, there's two, if you're gonna be running on the Japanese version, you've got, I'll go through the options here. Uh, this is start. The second one is copy game, copy file. And the, uh, the last one, the third one on the very bottom is erase, which you just saw me do. We're gonna go to start. Uh, and this is the two language options. So the Japanese version has an adult mode and a uh, child mode. On there, you're gonna select the the top one because that's it, it has no impact on the gameplay whatsoever. Um, just the end, really, uh, like the ending screens. Uh, the children's mode have, has different ones, and the adult mode is the ones that you would know if you played like the English version or if you've seen any run of this game. Um, so Japanese is different because it has an easy and a normal mode and a hard mode as well that's unlocked after beating normal. So we're just going to select normal, and we're going to let the cutscene play out as you normally would. If you're using a completed file, what you can do is you can start over, and I'll show you how to do that as well. And you're able to skip this intro cutscene. Uh, but to create a file, and I, I know that there are some people that run on like the Wii U uh, virtual console, and... I don't, I, I'm not entirely sure. I don't really remember how we determine. I, I think it, as long as it's starting, every run has to start on a soft reset. And what that is, is you just press A, B, start, and select at the same time, and it will reset the game uh, back to the main menu. It, it's it's a reset, essentially, of the, the, the game and not the entire system. Um, so, a soft reset and then start playing from there at the very end if you're on emulator show your emulator the emulator settings that are required and then you're good because 
the, the soft reset is just to prevent any sort of, you know, scripts that are that could be used during the middle of a run, that could, you know, be used to fake a run, or whatever the case may be. Again, uh, I couldn't tell you what any of this is, don't read Japanese at all. Um, vaccine Metroid, the Metroid vaccine, that much I'm getting. Um, but yeah. Also, I have, I have a tendency to ramble sometimes, so I apologize. Especially in this first video, where if I'm rambling for a bit too long, you just like, shut up and get to it, I understand. Alright. Now that we're almost done with the cutscene, all we gotta do is land the ship. So, in a minute here, when Adam begins talking to me, not this text, after the cutscene of the ship flying into the hangar bay and landing, um, there's going to be a map that's downloaded. On that screen, I'm going to soft reset. And it will give me a 00, zero file. The zero, 00 file will be the one that you start every single run from. Uh, runs will be rejected from the leaderboard if you start the game, you go through the first Adam text, and then you save. The, the first bit of text is included in the run. So we would unfortunately have to um, reject the run. And I'm unsure whether or not it's possible for the Wii, the, the Wii U or the Wii Virtual Console to soft reset. I haven't checked recently, so right here I'm just going to soft reset the console using A, B, start, and select. You'll see it go black, and when I release, it will load up again. And I've got a 00, zero file. So when I press start, it starts me at this, you know, map section, and you can start running. So. Because RTA is now uh, being used for the leaderboard, that means that tech, you know, mashing through text is now going to be very important as well. Um, and everyone has like their different way that they mash through text. The fastest way to get through text, let me make sure that this is on camera. So the fastest way you'll get through text, you can see here, um, is if you hold the, uh, there's the lighting. So if you hold the down input, you can advance the text. Let me just start this so I can give you a proper demonstration. So down and A and B will advance the text. So it goes slow and then I press down. I can press down again and it'll speed it up. A will do this as well, as will B. All, th all of these methods will advance the text. The method I find the fastest is I mash the A button as quickly as I possibly can and try to time my down inputs so that way when the next text box comes up, I can start to scroll the text as quickly as possible. Um, you cannot just continue holding down um, from text box to text box. It will require you to release and press another input, whether it be down on the D-pad, B, or A. Um, so just getting through this first text here, uh, and then we'll get into the gameplay. And whatever you find most comfortable, I find that method to be as comfortable for me. You might find something else to be a little bit more comfortable, and that's completely fine. So, now that we're in the game, uh, if you've never played this game before, so B is going to be shoot, and A is going to be jump. Your left trigger will be to angle up and down. And if you press it once, it will automatically angle upwards. Uh, you have to press down on the D-pad to get it to angle down. If you jump up and you press down on the D-pad, you can fire down, or you know, you can just hold the left trigger. And once you're aimed down, you don't have to you can let go of the down input. So as you can see, I'm gonna hold the right trigger with my right index finger here. And what I'll do is I'll press down, whoops, wrong side. I'll press down once and I can just release it and it you can, you know, continue to, you know, run, whatever the case may be, left and right. And as long as you hold the left trigger down, your arm cannon will be angled downwards until you press up or release uh, the button. So uh, another very common thing that you should know about is how to wall jump. Uh, let me just get to the first... Oh, of course, D-pad is how to move, and then pause is the start button's 
select doesn't do anything. Um, it's just there for show. Alright, so... I skipped the first room. It's just run to the left. Um, <laughs> I didn't think that I needed to spend too much time on it. Uh, so here's the first big room uh, that we referring, uh, we lovingly refer to as the climb. It's a vertical room that we're trying to ascend as quickly as possible. Something that, uh, that's of note is that when you're running, the, the fastest way to move through this game is running on the ground or rolling in a morph ball. Uh, if you jump, you can see that if, even if I'm running along, you know, I'll, I'm running along, but as soon as I jump, I start to slow down. When you jump and you add a vertical velocity, your horizontal or X uh, axis velocity is halved. So you want to minimize jumping as much as you possibly can, especially in long horizontal rooms. Um, so, you know, it, it's going to be... It's going to be an interesting balance. Like, the more you play the game, the more you'll realize, like, oh, I need to, to run, or, you know, I, I could be running here, maybe I shouldn't jump here, or whatever the case may be. But uh, running and rolling, the fastest you can move through this game, jumping, you try to do as little bit as possible, but wherever it's necessary, it's necessary. So, if you're just learning this game, um, you can just climb this room up like this. However you want to get up there is fine. And then you're done. Uh, if you want to, there's a lot of different ways to uh, do it. Uh, there's the method where you kind of, you know, if you want to get comfortable with wall jumps, wall jumping, you just go jump along a wall, press the opposite direction, and then press A. So, oh god, this is going to be tough to, to do. Let me see here. Okay. So I'm just going to. There's A here. So I'm going to spin jump. Oh shoot. <laughs> Alright, hang on, that's not, L let me just reposition here, alright, so, where's the camera, here we go, so what I'm going to do here, is I'm going to run, I'm going to jump, and then as I jump, I'm going to press the opposite direction, so it'll be, also ignore my fucking Megan Tho Fox thumbs, uh, <laughs> I will jump, and then I will jump again, and I'll be able to wall jump, very easy, um, it, it'll take you some time, potentially, to get the feel for it, just so that way you can get somewhat consistent with it. Um, so, and, and these platforms as well, uh, they're kind of like half-height blocks. So, there's a full-height block, and then these platforms, they kind of take up half of that height. Um, so, this method is a little bit trickier, especially if you're first learning, but if you want to like put in the time and the effort, this is what it would look like, the f like one of the faster ways to go about it. You would wall jump off of that, then jump, 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 oops. Jump, 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 get up here, and then jump up here. So it's a lot of inputs very rapidly and very precisely. So to activate a wall jump, you need Samus's sprite when it's spinning. And I'll show it like spinning right here. The very bottom right or the bottom left of the sprite, whatever um, part of Samus is lined up along the wall, the very bottom corner of that sprite needs to be touching the wall. So it, that's why it makes these a little bit more difficult because you need to have the sprite be at just high enough to where you're able to do the jump. If you're too high, you won't be able to get it. If you're too low, the same thing. Um, but that's the one key thing of how to activate it. That's one method. The other method you could do is you can run up this way, do a couple quick jumps, and then do the same jumps up top. So it's jump, oh, whoops. <laughs> jump, Oop. I haven't done this in forever. This is a very old method. Jump, 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 jump. Uh, there it is. I don't remember the exact terminology uh, for that one, or the, the, not terminology, the name of it. Um, you're just starting out though, and you're still getting it, you can, you know, just hang off and wall kick off it. So the way you would wall kick is the same as the wall jump. Uh, so you just hang from a ledge, press the opposite direction, and it'll put you in this little pose where Samus has her foot on the thing, and then just press jump, and she'll jump right off the platform. And then you can, you know, just do this all the way up. If you want, you can... And there's different things you can do. You can come up here, jump, jump, jump. Or as soon as you get up here, you could jump. 
up onto here, wall jump again, and then do that. Whatever you find most comfortable um, at first, because especially because you're just if you're just learning the game, you want to do what's most comfortable for you. Um, you don't have to do the world record strategies right away, and I would definitely encourage that if in conjunction to this, uh, you go and watch other runners that aren't like the world record. Um, so like. You know, if you're just starting out and your time's like, and at like in game time is like an hour and like 10 minutes or so, maybe go watch a few runs that are, you know, in the 50s or like high 50s, low hour, just to get like a kind of see what every, somebody else is doing. And then, you know, as you want to get and develop more of your, um, you know, what your strats and what you're doing and like you want to push the limit for what you're doing, what you're comfortable with, definitely watch those faster runs and let and practice, you know. You know, just get it into muscle memory. This game it primarily is muscle memory. There's a little RNG, not a whole lot, but there is a little bit of it. Uh, but it's mostly just getting through room to room, and then there's some boss fights sprinkled in between, and, you know, just doing it over and over again, practicing over and over again, uh, and just building that muscle memory. You'll start to see, like, you'll be moving through rooms a lot easier, you'll get, take less hits. Um, and you'll generally be like, oh, well, I don't need to go and grab, you know, these extra items because I'm getting hit less and, you know, I, I, you're going to start to feel more comfortable with the game. Um, so just keep that in mind while you're watching and, like, when you're wanting to, you know, maybe, like, if, you know, if during the time that you stumble upon this, I'm still uploading them, uh, you know, you go, oh, well, I can't, I, I really want to see, you know, what's next, I don't really want to wait, you can go and watch another run and see what they're doing, uh, you know, there might not be too much explanation, or you can catch somebody that's streaming this, uh, and just ask questions, or even go into the Discord and ask questions, and, and there will be a lot of people that are willing to help you, uh, to, to learn this game, this community, we love to see it grow, we love when new people run the game, and the main reason I am creating this, you know, series is so that way we can bring, more people in, give them more exposure, and make it a little easier to, you know, make it, uh, to, to learn the run. Um, so, I ran two screens to the left, don't really need to know anything about those rooms except run left for now. Get to Adam, talk here, so, and here's another room that's gonna be slightly technical at first. Um, you can, you know, just do whatever, jump, jump, and just do this, whatever it takes to get to the top, very easy. Uh, you can do something a little bit more advanced, like this. Uh, and I'll take this a little bit slower. Another thing you're going to see me do a lot here, uh, especially when I go through it quickly, is I will jump up and I will shoot. So when I jump and I shoot, as you can see here, in the spin jump and shoot, when I shoot it brings me out of spin jump. Um, and this is very helpful or it, it saves a little bit of time. It's not a whole lot of time, but it does save some time. So if I jump up, I'm able to stand up quicker when jumping up on a ledge. So that way I can start running again as quickly as I possibly can. So the way I do this is I will, as soon as I fire a shot, I will immediately fire and then press A immediately as soon as uh, I fire and stand up because I'm jumping high enough to where I can unmorph and stand up so that way I can make an input as quickly as possible. So the, the fastest way to get through this room would be to do, you know, run, jump shoot, jump shoot, and then grab onto this ledge and then jump up off of it. So, oops, having some trouble grabbing it. So if you're having trouble doing this, uh, so what you would do here, uh, it's same with, kind of same with the kick climb, sorry, not kick climb, the, uh, the wall kick when you're hanging off of an object. So instead of, you know, pressing a direction and pressing A to kick off of it, you will just press nothing on the D-pad and just press jump. When you hit jump, it, we call, it's a neutral jump, so that way you just jump right up. And you could do this anywhere if you want to, um, you know, you don't want to excuse me, if you don't want to do like a ledge climb, which you're hanging from here, if you hold the direction you're hanging and press A, you will have, Samus will climb up the ledge to stand up, but if you want to, 
you know, instead of going through the animation, if you're hanging, you want to do a, oops, you want to do a neutral jump to get up there. That's also just as fast, I, if not faster, I believe. Um, but the timing is very difficult, especially if you're doing inputs very quickly. So, again, you can just come through this way and do whatever. Uh, you don't have to shoot at all, especially if like you're just trying to go through it. Depending on how high you jump depends on how long you hold the uh, the button. So if I tap it, like I'm doing now, I come right off. But if I hold it, I can jump much higher. Uh, and like if I let go mid-jump, I can jump, do a medium jump, and jump in between. Just a tap, I can just do you know, something short. So you're going to want to try to like experiment and get very comfortable with jumping like and how long you have to press the A button. Because it's going to be very different for each uh, jump to each platform there's not really and again like you can just come up this way and then from here you can jump up and then as you jump up you're going to want to turn around so like as you jump and spin like you can jump straight up like this and then just press right as soon as you get to the point of you know here i am you're no longer going to get hit uh you can have it so that way like i just did ease platform will push you out to the left like that it's very tight um it's an edge boost so it'll, it'll push you to the left a little bit but once you're out from underneath and you're to the left of it and you're able to turn around and grab it you can then do a neutral jump and then just press left after the neutral jump so that way you can grab this ledge you can do a neutral jump from there or you can climb up the ledge oops either is very quick Moving on here, um, just run right off this ledge, come down here, and you're going to come through this door down below. Uh, the fastest way to clear this room is going to be to do this. As soon as you run in, you're going to want to jump, jump to this one, and then fire two shots as it jumps towards you. Uh, so you're going to come in, jump, jump, jump towards him, and then fire two shots. It's it's a little off because of the fact that, um, I think it's under my butt. Um, <laughs> sorry. Uh, it's gonna be a little off because once you enter the room, the door locks behind you, so... If you just run in, and then do something like this, and then fire like that, you'll hit both of them. And when you jump, you might- you definitely you want to jump towards it, because it'll ensure that both shots get hit. You're gonna want to angle down as well, so you want to do, again, press left, uh, trigger, jump, and then fire. Uh, again, you can just come in, do whatever come down here and then fire and then leave uh but if you feel comfortable enough to get this down come in and do something along those lines you could probably get it to where it goes like this it's just as fast you just want to kill the horn note as quickly as possible to unlock the door there are uh, several events in this game this game works on an event flag system uh let me try to mess with the event flag, because that should have tripped an event flag. This is the debug menu, by the way. Um, something you'll probably never see unless you're doing what I'm doing here. Where you come in, you lock the door, there's the horn out, I shoot twice, and now I'm out. So I'm going to be using that debug menu to kind of be able to go through things. Something like, like this again, so... Whoops. Set this again, and again, you can just come in here, you can go, okay, well, jump, I'll fall down, jump, and then shoot it twice, and then just leave. Whatever you're comfortable with. Again, you don't have to do, you know, what everybody else is doing. You can just do what is comfortable for you, and, you know, no one's gonna, like, chastise you or anything like that. If you're going for a competitive time, there are, like, the, quote, fastest strats that you'll probably want to practice and learn a little bit, but again, just starting out, do what's up to you. I'm gonna, I, I'm just trying to provide options to, you know, for what you might want to do, like, come in here and do something like this. Oops. Jump up here, fall down, wall kick off, and then fire two. I think that's also, uh, I haven't seen that method done in a while, but I think that also, uh, is just as quick, so let's see. Oops. Let's, let's reset that. And I'm hoping that me messing with this event flag doesn't really mess with things too much. Let's come in here, angle down. 
Oh. Well, not particularly, but it gets you over there pretty quickly if you're going for style points. I don't think it's any... It's not any faster. It's just you get some swag bonus points for doing it. All right, so coming out of here, you can jump up here, climb up, jump, climb up. That's one way. You can, you know, jump, neutral jump, and then wall jump off of here, or you can climb up. If you're going for the wall jump, the fastest way to do it is to neutral jump and then do uh, wall jump off of that platform to the right. Uh, most everybody, though, just climbs up twice. It's just as quick. Can take this platform on the left. And then you're on your way. And then for here, you're just going to come down and just drop through the room as quickly as possible. Um, again, I ran off this platform. And then what I did was I did a spin immediately as I was falling. So in the air, what you can do is if you jump, do a straight jump and press A in the air again, you can start to spin. And when you spin, you kind of have some uh, horizontal velocity added to, uh, as, to your jump. While you're falling, you can use this to your advantage to get a little bit of extra distance, as well as to more easily maneuver around platforms. So if I was to come in here, say, and just kind of run off and do this, I mean, that works too. Um, let's see if this, uh, I mean, that's just as quick. Uh, you're gonna wanna, if you wanna, you can do like a very small jump off of here and you can avoid this platform because if you don't, you're just gonna hit the very edge of it. A very small hop will get you over this platform. So whether or not you wanna spin off of this uh, platform here is up to you. Uh, I find that, you know, I just do it instinctively and, you know, whatever the case may be, I, I feel it helps me get a little bit closer to the left, to the right side, as opposed to doing something like this. Yikes, I can't even, there we go, whoops. It's pretty precise without the additional, you know, without the additional spin help. Once you get through, um, we're going to have a very long tech segment here with Adam. Again, just trying to get through this as quickly as you possibly can. I'm mashing the A button while pressing down as the text advances. As the, te as the box clears and we confirm the box, I just press down again and I'm able to just keep advancing the text. It's very, very timing related um, and it's going to take you some time to get used to it. So this room, another very technical room that has some options to it. So you can just jump up here and just, you know, grab this, jump up here and whatever. Um, or, uh, the fastest way would be to kind of wall jump up off here, wall jump off this, like that, oops. Wall jump in the middle, and then wall jump off of, off of this for this. So, whatever method you want to do, and, you know, you can just take your time, or you can, if you want to wall jump here, then once you wall jump off of here, you're able to grab this platform just by wall jumping off of this wall, and then... Uh, jumping up onto that platform. Uh, again, though, it's, you know, if you want to do this and then try to practice that, you know, whatever the case may be, you don't even have to wall jump off of that. You can do a hybrid of, like, all three, whatever you want to do. You can, you know, wall jump, wall jump, grab this ledge, do this, and not do the third wall jump, which is pretty tight timing. To get that third jump, um, to make sure you're able to wall jump off of that third platform, you have to wall jump off of your delay until you're like in between this dot here and this dot right there. It's kind of precise, but as long you have to be like towards like the middle of those two in that space to be able to have the correct height to be able to wall jump too high, you're gonna hit your head. You know, you'll hit your head on this platform right here, like this, and you won't grab the ledge at all. Um, too low. And you'll just end up wall gra a ledge gra or yeah, ledge grabbing this platform. Anything's fine. Moving through, um, you can just run right through this enemy as it spawns. No issues here. Uh, run through the save room, take a safety save if you want. Again, just jump up here. I that's you know if you want to take it like this, 
grab that platform. The fastest way would be to jump grab this ledge and then climb up. And then as you're jumping up here, press up on the D-pad. Because pressing up on the D-pad and looking in any direction will break you out of your spin. You're doing this, and as soon as you land, uh, you want to do it as early as possible so that way when you land, you can just jump straight up and grab the ledge and then just pull yourself up and then just do a, you know, a quick jump, open the door. Uh, again, nothing wrong with doing something like this. Or grabbing that, uh, or if that zombie gives you trouble while you're doing that, which you can, you know, just shoot him and then just continue uh, on. Another, another bit of atom text. The game is very front-loaded with atom text. Uh, thankfully, we'll get, a, get to get away from this for a little bit. Uh, so now we're gonna go up and get missiles, and again, here's just you know, jump, 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 shoot. Um, another way you can do it, you know, you can do the method that I was talking about earlier, where, you know, as you hit the ledge, you fire, and then jump immediately as you land, so that way you can get a jump immediately as you land. So that way you can be moving as quickly as possible. You know, you can jump, jump, you know, and just uh, shoot and as you unmorph. Just to get up here and then press up on the elevator to take the elevator up. Uh, this screen, you're going to have some text. If you press and hold A, like this, you'll see that the text is starting to scroll a little faster when I press it. So you're going to want, as soon as the screen comes up and you see it flashing, uh, you can like double tap or like, you know, and just press A just to scroll it as quickly as possible. So now there's three different choices here. You're going to come up here for this third one. You can jump off of, the, oh, well. You can jump off of that small platform, or you can just jump and grab the ledge and pull yourself up. Uh, go through the navigation room and do the download. And you'll get 10 missiles to start out with. This is the only Metroid game where you'll get 10 missiles to start out with. Uh, pressing any button will lower the menu, so if I press right, it will just take the text box away and I'm able to regain control of sounds. And again, I'm talking to Adam because we need direction in this game. Uh, very linear, which isn't, a hard, which isn't a bad thing. All right, now that we've talked to Adam and he's like, hey, there's a big cluster of X forming in this area, go check it out. We're gonna come out here and we're just gonna jump on this platform and we're gonna jump again and we'll fire to destroy this thing, just fire a missile to destroy this. Um, if you want to, you know, fire a missile early, so that way but it's open by the time you get there, so you don't have to stop and wait, you can, you know, once you get here, just fire a missile, and then run and jump. Because the missile travels so slowly oh, across the screen, you're able to, you know, scroll the screen a little bit before it will hit its target. Um, if you fire at something that's off screen, most often the missile will just travel off of screen, off of the screen. And it will just hit nothing um, because it'll despawn it. It'll just despawn once it goes off the screen. <clears throat> <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so just doing that, and then we're just gonna jump in here to this little tunnel, and then we're in these little like ventilation shafts. So this guy, he only gets destroyed by missiles. So as you're running up. You can fire three missiles or stop and fire three missiles, anything works. As you fall down, you're gonna wanna hold left. Uh, as you hold, if you hold left through those crumble blocks, you'll fall through and you'll just grab the ledge that you can pull yourself up immediately to. Uh, falling through and then jumping up and grabbing it is also fine. Shoot the block and you're just gonna wanna run and kinda zigzag through here. Gonna grab the ledge. Very important when you're grabbing ledges. The longer you press A, the longer it will take to. Um, as you can see, like as I spin jump into it, the longer I press A, the longer it'll be until like your vertical velocity is done. You won't grab a, a ladder until you have no vertical velocity. So if I spin jump and let go of A, you'll see that I grab it much sooner. Like the moment I let go of A, I'm able to grab it. So. You're gonna want to pull up and left, or sorry, up and left, up and right, and you're just gonna want to do something kind of akin to this. You can just, you know, climb up if you want to. 
or you can, you know, again, kind of wall jump off of here. Anything is fine. Come down. Here's your first missile pack. Very easy to miss this uh, if you're going for a low percent. If you're going from a uh, low percent to any percent and you're just thinking, oh, hey, look, it's a missile pack. I shouldn't be grabbing that. Um, for any percent, grab it. <laughs> Every uh, run for any percent will grab this uh, missile pack as well as the second one coming up here in a second. Uh, the reason being is that each pack will give you five, and you'll have 20 missiles uh, after the fact, which is going to be very important for the first fight. So you'll run, after you grab this first missile pack up here, just run to the left, come here, and you'll find the next missile in this block just hidden on the corner here, which you have to shoot to un- uh, un- Shoot to reveal. <laughs> I don't know why, I, I, I guess I was going, trying to go for uncover and reveal for some reason. It was trying to make, my brain was trying to make me say unravel. That's not what I mean. You will reveal it if you shoot it with a shot, a missile, whatever the case may be. But then you're just going to continue right, and you're just going to you know, kill these zombies. If you want to take a safety save, you can come up here, and you've got a save station up here that you can save at. I would recommend, if you're still getting comfortable with the game, definitely save. Um, you know, just getting through the game, again, is, like, is the main goal. You don't have, it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, and this is, you know, your first Idor or Ghidorah. The only way you can damage them is with missiles, as you can see. Um, and it'll take shots at you. So if I shoot it with the pea shoot, pea shooter it doesn't do anything. Um, he's being really nice. I wish he would be this nice to me during runs. She's old man. Um... So, the Idors or the Ghidoras are random. They are your first source of RNG in the run. So, the Idors themselves, they can shoot anywhere between zero and four times. And they have, they have two separate, uh, I guess, RNG calls. The first one being the timer that will open the Idor. That makes it like you know go from closed to open, whether or not it's a shot or not. And the second one is whether or not you will actually shoot a shot. So this the first eye door can give you anywhere between zero to twelve shots. Uh, it's more likely to give you one to three shots than it is to give you zero to four. Unfortunately, if you get zero, that's great. If not, then you know it happens. Um, and I'm just gonna destroy it. There's a method that you can do where, you know, you can stand on this dot and you kind of fire two shots, you know, kind of like that, where they're lined up and they hit at the same time to do, uh, hit, to have two missiles hit at once. Doing that will do double the damage than a single missile because if you hit two missiles on the same frame, it will, uh, take that as being hit twice instead of one time. So you can kind of skip uh, round, but I wouldn't recommend that. That's something that if you're interested in trying to learn it while you're learning it, um, definitely just stand in like a save room or somewhere where you can easily farm green X. Um, so that way you can, you know, just keep jumping and getting into the pattern of trying to, you know, jump press B, then A and B at the same time to try to overlap those missiles as quickly as you can if you're willing to, you know, sit there and learn it while you're learning the game. Or you could just push that off until later and, um, you know, just, you know, go about the, you know, just fire when it opens method and go through the three vulnerabilities. So for here, just grab the ledge and kick climb up or, you know, as I just did, wall jump, fall down here, you can wall jump on this lower portion, like right around here. Again, kind of grab this and do that as well. A very free E-Tank in the way, I highly recommend grabbing it. There's another E-Tank up here. I'm going to pull up the quick save here, just, just because, um, so that way I'm at full missile. So what you can do is you fire a missile, fire a shot, and then you can just run up here and grab it. Um, there is a little downside to this, um, this is, you would grab this for a 100% and it would put you at 19 missiles. Um, so Arachnus coming up here, our first boss fight, it takes 15 missiles to kill Arachnus. 
And I'm realizing now that I might... Actually, I'll just, I'll just do Sector 1 anyway. Um, Arachnus takes 15 missiles to kill. Which is why we grab the two missile packs. So that way we have 20, and that way we have missiles at the end for the core fight. Ideally, you don't want to see him roll at all. If he does, it's not a big deal. You'll just tink some missiles. Which kind of sucks, and you'll, if you run out of missiles, you'll have to shoot your pea shooter. But um, let's, let's do a fight just to see, you know, what it is. And again, you can just do whatever, but you're just going to fire missiles at him. And he rolled, so I stopped firing, I took over him, and I just start firing again. Uh, one more. He's dead. I didn't get a double there. I forgot that I can't get a double wall, a single wall jump here. And then you're just going to shoot the core. This first core will take um, three shots. Oops. Let me just reload the save. And again, same, so on the core fight, you can shoot two missiles as it uh, spawns in to try to have two missiles in its hitbox as it spawns. And that's an ideal fight, so there are two missiles I missed. I'm gonna go for a double here. And the way you get a double is you jump, you fire a missile, jump, and then fire another missile. Uh, I'll do this a couple times, just so you can see, like, there's what variability there is in the fight. The last one I got, you know, very lucky. With no rolls. Uh, he rolled immediately here, so he's probably gonna roll again immediately here after he slashes. Ooh, did not. I, I was able to hit two mis fire two missiles there. And then I got a horizontal sweet spot. So if you destroy the core X where the X normally spawns, like the power up spawns, um, it becomes available immediately. So it doesn't have to float around the room like you saw the first couple of times. It will just break and become immediately available. And you're going to want to try to do that if you're going for like faster times to try to get it as quickly as you possibly can. Um, but it's not necessarily a requirement if you get it along the horizontal. It'll just fly right into place and stop and become available. Um, so the more you play it, the more you'll be able to see, um, you know, where these power-ups are going to spawn in these rooms, and you'll notice it and be able to tell throughout, like, this, this series. Um, now we have Morph Ball, and the way you activate it, just press down on the D-pad twice, and you'll be able to do it. Uh, you'll go into a crouch position the first time you press down, then you'll morph, press up once and you'll kind of be in the crouch position, and you're able to go through one by one, or one block height uh, areas, and you're just going to want to get out of here as quickly as you possibly can, pull yourself up, as you pull yourself up you'll morph immediately, and come through here, uh, another method that you can do is if you, you know, are feeling kind of cheeky, unmorph, and then wall jump off of there to just wall jump up, or if you fall down here, you can wall jump up this way, or just jump high, as high as you can. If you fall down this way, you may as well just, there's no point in going back unless you want to go for swag to come up this way. Just fall down, come up this way, and then you can, I unmorph there for one specific reason. If I just were to roll off like this, <coughs> excuse me, you can see that, um, you know, as I land, I've got so much downward velocity that Samus kind of bounces off the ground here. But if I morph, uh, if I unmorph and morph in midair as I land, um, I'm not hitting the ground as hard, so I don't have that bounce. So I'm able to slide through here um, as quickly. So again, you're just going to want to jump up here, shoot these two blocks, and go through. You can unmorph here and do something, you know, wall jump off here and then fire two shots through. It's kind of tight timing, um, and I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. Another way, if you only hit one block, you can just, you know, do a neutral jump shoot and then press left after you uh, jump neutrally so that way you're grabbing the ledge. Um, and then just roll through and then uh, continue on there. And this might look familiar, we're going to be retreading uh, over places that we've already seen. Just keep running to the left, and then we're going to fall back down here, 
I jump extend there, because if I don't jump extend as I fall, I, I hit the ledge, even when I spin and get the little extra distance. Oops, I gotta stop doing it. It's instinct. I'll spin, but I'll like, very barely land on this ledge. Um, and a jump extend is you shoot and you respin. So if you jump, spin, and then kind of, as you're like spinning while you fall and then you shoot a shot, you kind of un you unmorph immediately as you would like if you're doing something like this. So if you do this, if you kind of shoot and unmorph, kind of stop and you press A again immediately, it will kind of, it'll reset your velocity, really. As you can kind of see, I kind of stopped there for a second and then I continue to fall. By doing that slight hesitation there and stopping all of my downward velocity and then re-spinning, I'm able to delay when I would actually hit and I'm able to gain more horizontal distance by doing that. And you'll see, I'll, I'll use that a few times um, through a, a couple different sectors to gain a little bit of extra distance on a jump. Um, that I wouldn't otherwise be able to make without doing, like, a uh, wall kick or something like that, or, you know, without having to grab the ledge if I'm trying to avoid grabbing the ledge, or whatever the case may be. So, we coming back through this room, same strat as before. Do whatever you're comfortable with, and then you're gonna kind of come down here and do this. You can either jump and morph in midair as you land to continue on, you can run off the ledge, jump, and then morph in midair, or just jump up, jump up, and then morph, and then do this. And then, you know, unmorph to stand back up, or if you uh, want to, you can press once, and then jump to kind of get yourself up immediately, because, well, you know, kind of doing this, it's, you know, you're, you're pressing up twice and you're kind of delaying it, so if you kind of press up once while holding left and jump and shoot, you're able to unmorph and continue moving pretty seamlessly. And this will be the conclusion of the main deck area. Um, this kind of ran a little long, a little bit longer than I was expecting. Um, where are we at? We're about an hour. Um, I, I know I said I would do Sector 1 and 2. Uh, I don't know how much information I want to bombard in in a singular episode. Episode. A single video. Um, so, I think what I'll do is I'll do this. Uh, I'll... We'll, we'll end it in the Sector 1 save room. And we'll... Pick it up in the next video, or the next installment of, uh, you know, me going through and, you know, walking through, like, uh, you know, every little bit of this game to kind of teach you how to speedrun this game. And I, I, I this one was kind of front-loaded with, you know, additional information and whatnot, and kind of useless, maybe? Uh, well, what, not useless, mostly me rambling. <laughs> but... Um, we'll continue on to Sector 1, we're just gonna go left, as you can see, when you come down here, you'll always see the sector you're supposed to go to, indicated by a flashing light on the wall. So just follow these numbers and you'll get where you need to go. Sector 1, you're gonna go down, so if you're watching this, I mean, you're not really gonna be guessing where you're gonna be going, I'll be telling you, uh, exactly where to go. Um, just come down here, you'll enter a navigation room, as all sectors will start off with. Adam will say, hey, you know, this is Sector 1, it's a uh, recreation of SR388 from the second game, uh, where, you know, we created a habitat, uh, for these things, there are five stabilizers that the X are clogging up, let's go do it, and then you got a save room, and I will save this here, I don't know why I'm saving here, I can save wherever, uh, <laughs> We'll pick this up in the next episode. So video, uh, <laughs> and I'll talk. I'll walk through getting through sector one. If that one goes pretty quickly, because I I don't. I'm trying to find the right balance of walking through, getting through rooms, different room strategies, and everything else. I want to be able to provide as much information as possible that you know will enable whomever is watching this, speaking to you directly, whoever's watching, 
I want to be able to enable you, the viewer, to have whatever tools you feel are necessary to be able to speedrun this and to be able to do this comfortably and to give you, you know, whatever it is that you feel is necessary to get through this, whether it be extra ammo or extra, um, speaking of extra ammo, I missed the missile pack. <laughs> Heck, um, we'll pick that one up later and I will be sure to reference this that that specific missile pack to pick up later because you can pick it up early to make sector one more consistent you can pick it up later um it doesn't really matter but now that i'm thinking about it i forgot that i apologize um that will be in a couple videos from now but again i just want to be able to give you all the tools um and give you as many options as you, know, you might need to be able to get through this reliably and get through this comfortably and like you know be able to take it at your own pace and if you want to you know if you're watching this as they come out and you want you're going okay well i've never played this before i want to you know i don't really want to wait for the next video um me let me just you know do sector one and see what i can find or whatever and then as you're waiting for these to come out i want to try to put these out I, i'm gonna shoot for once a week it's not it's not always the easiest to keep a schedule i'm gonna try to do my very best to maintain this schedule so that way you know it's not lagging behind but i'm gonna try uh for every sunday uh this could be I don't know, 12 episodes, maybe. I don't know. If we're going to go sector by sector, it's going to be very long. Um, and the, again, the reason it's going to be sector by sector, well, depending on the length, probably cover like an, like an hour video each time. If we cover multiple sectors, fantastic, which in the later um, portion of the game, we might be covering multiple sectors because... I mean, you know, the sectors will get shorter and shorter. Um, and then we'll, like, just, you know, an hour or so per video. Uh, just so that way you can practice the game in segments. Um, that's always the one thing. I, I, I think I mentioned it earlier, or I was starting to mention it, and I got away from it. Practicing the game in segments is really beneficial. Um, it enables you to just build that muscle memory in one specific portion of the game. Like, I'll see people who are learning the game that will, you know, do a specific segment over and over, reset uh, with whatever splits, and then build on that, and then just do, okay, I've done this segment, I'll start from the beginning, build on top of that, and then do this additional segment. And I, I don't fault that, because that's also, like, putting together, like, can, like building upon what you're doing. I will say being able to do it in segments per like, you know, saving at the beginning of each sector and then just running through that sector or running to a specific point and then stopping and saying, okay, and then just grinding at that out and then just practicing that portion. I feel like that might be more beneficial because there's definitely something that, especially in my own experience here, um, is that by doing that, and I noticed that like my end game is not always the best because i especially when i learned i would just try to you know i would do that method of okay i did this let me let me redo everything and then build on top of that and i feel like my end game kind of suffered because i spent because once i got to the point where i was completing runs i wasn't really practicing the you know the the end game portions it was all right let me just do this and then build on top of it but then once i got to the end it's okay i've been i completed a run now now, let me just keep doing runs and not like do segmented practice and I feel like like my time could benefit you know getting a, a lower time just by grinding out those end segments but I don't really have the time that I used to have to to be able to do this and to just sit and grind segments like I could do that for like a stream or two um and that's fine and I'd be fine with that um and but at the the moment I'm more so in the case of I just want to do runs and I'll just 
from start to finish, and I will, you know, take whatever I can get and learn from those runs as opposed to, which is also completely fine if you want to do that, um, just learn from those runs as I'm doing them, if that makes sense. But, alright, I've rambled on long enough. I will get this uploaded today. Okay, what? Put... You have no idea. Um, I'm gonna get this uploaded, and then, uh, if you're just finding this, check back in a week. Uh, every Sunday I'm gonna shoot to, to try to get this uploaded and have the next uh, portion of this to be able to, uh, enable you guys to be able to learn this and hopefully join the community. I'll have links in the description below for Discord invites to the community if you guys want to get more involved, you want to ask questions, we have a Q&A. Um, and just meet the community. We, there's so many different people and so many experiences in our community um, that, I mean, really, there's people available at all times, it feels like, throughout the day, where if you're going to go ask questions, the knowledge base is just so vast that, you know, anybody would be able, will be able to help you. Mostly anybody. Um, <laughs> Uh, a lot, there's a lot of people in there that will be able to help you and answer any questions you might have. So I will put links in the description below. Be sure to subscribe, uh, if you want to get these videos updated as well, or updated, to catch these videos as they come out. Um, but that's all for me. I'm Hercules Bench Press. Goodbye for now. I will see you in the next video. Have a good day.